So this is a big one, guys. How to travel more when you have a full-time job. I get questions about this all the time. I know that it's really difficult to be able to travel, especially if you live in the US and you get like no vacation time at all. But there are ways to do it and millions of people do it every single year. So if you want to be one of them, then listen to these five tips. Number one, find a job in the travel industry. So working in the travel industry is everyone's dream, I think, or at least every traveler's dream. It is the best way to be able to travel as much as possible because it means that you're going to be working in travel and probably doing lots of travel as part of your job. When I was working, full-time at a nine-to-five office job. I was lucky enough to get in to a large travel company and I went to St. Lucia, to Grenada, I went down to Italy a couple of times and it was awesome. It was just like the best part of the job really. The only thing I will say that is easier said than done getting a job in the travel industry. There are lots of people out there that want to do the same thing as you because the perks are so good. The competition is high and this means that salaries and wages are pretty low so you have to go into it not for the money and just for the love of travel but if you can weasel your way into a travel company then chances are you're gonna get a lot more opportunities to travel as well as probably some perks including cheaper airfare or cheap hotel stays or something like that so that's probably the best way to do it is to get a job in the travel industry number two find a job that involves some travel so if you're not really ready to just dive into the travel industry and not really get paid so much but you still want to be able to travel and have it incorporated into your work schedule, then find a job where you're going to be required to travel a lot. This is really good because what you can do, and most employers are totally happy with this, all you have to do is ask, is anytime that you get sent on a work trip, ask if you can stay a couple of days longer. That way you don't have to pay for a flight, which is huge. All you have to do is pay for your accommodation for a couple of days and you have some free time to explore and just hang out and explore the city however you want to without having to worry about your work schedule. You can even ask if they mind if your partner or your spouse comes out with you. You'll have to pay for their airfare obviously, but it still gives you guys a chance to explore together for a couple of days before you have to go back and get back to work. Number three, use your weekends wisely. I think a lot of people don't do this, but don't forget you have technically more than 48 hours every single week that you don't have to go to work and that's a chance to go and do anything that you possibly want to. I think it's really important to remember that to travel doesn't mean you have to get on a plane or go someplace really far or really exotic. Even just driving for a couple of hours and exploring someplace new or getting away and going to someplace where you can just relax and unwind is really great and you can do that without having to take any vacation time at all. So use your weekends wisely. It also means that it's a lot cheaper. All you have to do is pay for your accommodation and any activities that you do and the gas to get wherever you go. So think about hopping in a car right after work is finished on Friday, driving a couple hours somewhere and relaxing and exploring someplace new before you have to head back to work on Monday. Number four, travel during the off season. This is a little bit more if you're worried about cost, but traveling during the off peak season means that first of all, there's going to be a lot less crowds. It also means that your trip is gonna be a lot cheaper. The airfare won't be as expensive. Your accommodation will probably be a lot cheaper as well. So if you're worried about cost, traveling when it's not the really busy season and maybe not the most ideal weather is going to mean that you can travel for a lot longer or can just do a lot more things in the set time that you have. An example of this is going to Florence in October or November. I don't really recommend anyone to go to Florence when it's the summer because it is so hot and so crowded. I prefer going in October time. Two years ago, we visited in October. It was almost warm enough for swimming weather, but not quite. And then we went in November. And it was still quite warm. We just had light jackets. And because we went in November, it was actually almost December, we got a really, really good deal on it. So consider traveling during the off-peak season. Number five, plan an epic staycation. So staycations became really popular during the recession when lots of families families couldn't afford to go on holidays. So instead they would have a staycation with their kids and it's something that anybody could do and still have a really, really great time. Essentially what a staycation is, is just getting out of your little bubble of your home for the weekend and not going far at all. So booking a hotel just down the road or renting an apartment or a house somewhere in the place that you live, which is really, really cost effective and 
just kind of fun to get a change of scenery. That's why it's been really popular. So if you want to do a more romantic staycation, you can book a nice hotel and you can go to the spa or if you want to just chill out in the room and watch movies, you could do that, it's really up to you. Or if you want to do some kind of staycation with your friends, see if you can find an Airbnb flat to rent or get a suite or even a whole house where you can just all hang out, play games, drink, do whatever you want to do and it'll just be nice to spend time with each other away from each other's places. So I want to know, if you work full time, how do you make sure that you travel as much as possible during the year? Leave some tips in the comments below and share your thoughts on how to do it. I'd love to hear what you guys do too. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and you won't miss any more of my travel advice videos coming up. I'm also doing some stylish travel tips so be sure to click the little subscribe button.